And we have to do our best to, to, to work on media reform. It's a staggering uh, problem to try to face. Uh, the, the, the organization Free Press is uh, a good example of a, a leading nonprofit which is, which is fighting for media reform. If you see how they're, they're fighting for uh, freedom of content on the Internet, you know what I'm, I'm talking about. But there are, there are other, many other good models. Uh, the Rachel Maddow Show is one of my favorites. Uh, the Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman. We work with Amy. Uh, we need to use the blogosphere, I think, in coming uh, decades, just like the conservatives used uh, talk radio in, in, in the past. Uh, but we also, I would suggest, need to follow the example of the Guardian newspaper in, in London. The Guardian is my favorite newspaper. Uh, the Guardian has identified a village in Uganda called Katine. Uh, and this village uh, is being invested in social and economic investment. And the Guardian has identified Barclays Bank as the uh, financer and has identified NGOs as the providers of technical assistance. But the poor people in Katini are really doing all the work. So their first achievement was to dig a well. And their second achievement was to build a school. Uh, and the Guardian is now sort of stepping aside. It's facilitated the startup of the process and is uh, is monitoring it, is writing articles, and has his own blog so people can write in and say, oh, you're, this is really stupid, or you should change it. So there's an ongoing debate about uh, how to create social reform in this village in Uganda. I think this is a wonderful model. Uh, I've always uh, respected the plain dealer. I would like to challenge the plain dealer. I know it's, times are tough for uh, regional newspapers, but I would like to challenge the uh, the Plain Dealer to, to consider with Eisenhower and, uh, the possibility of replicating uh, what The Guardian is doing in Uganda, but doing it in a neighborhood in, in Cleveland. Uh, I think uh, the leadership of a newspaper like this could spread the word around the country. And my hometown, Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, is, is the same kind of newspaper. It's a, a regional newspaper with a, a proud tradition. And so these are some examples of the, the kind of of media reform that are necessary, but, but so much, much more uh, needs, to, needs to be done, including what we do, which is a media school. Uh, if you go to the Heritage Foundation, which is the biggest conservative think tank, you see that they have a studio, a television studio, where everyone who works for the Heritage Foundation gets media training. How to, for example, uh, appear on a talk show and make the, your point three times in a certain way and uh, keep on target. Well, how often do uh, inner city community-based organizations get that kind of media training? Well, they can with Eisenhower because uh, our media trainer, who's an African-American woman who's a former anchor, uh, television anchor, provides media training to uh, inner city nonprofit leaders. And we, we, have, we bring out a television camera, and each person has to sit uh, and first give a a 90 second summary of their organization and their peers are watching them so you know they get pretty stressed out and and sweating um, and, and then uh, they we critique them and then the next step is a is a friendly interview our, our uh, communications person does a, a, a nice interview and asks them decent questions but then the third round is a Rush Limbo type interview where, and you can imagine our communications person is a, is a liberal African American woman and she pretends she's Rush Limbo and she asks really nasty questions. But, but throughout this process, the inner city leaders really learn quickly. They're naturals and you know, they know it. And so why don't we give this kind of media training at the grassroots? Uh, it, gets, it allows these people to get the message out and, and that helps in turn uh, to, to raise money. So these kinds of strategies are certainly uh, all needed, but they all point back to one reality, one basic truth that we have today. President Obama won, but the dream remains deferred. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or sugar over like a syrupy sweet? 
Perhaps that dream just sags like a heavy load. Or, my friends, does it just explode? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Today at the City Club of Cleveland, we are listening to a special program with Dr. Alan Curtis of the Eisenhower Foundation. Now, we would like to return to our speaker for our traditional City Club question and answer period. We welcome questions from everyone, including guests, and holding the microphone today is City Club Outreach Coordinator, Deborah Agosti. Now for the first question, please. So, Mr. Curtis, uh, just uh, uh, one thing I want to um, uh, get your your input on. Um, since since the current commission came out over 40 years ago, um, we've had Democrat and Republican uh, senators, congresspeople, whole whole host of people. And one of my questions is whether or not the political will even exists to allocate the funds necessary to actually meet out these programs that you're speaking about. Because we certainly, you talked about programs in different pockets of the country, but whether or not, especially in light of the fact that money is being spent over and over and over again right now, that folks are kind of getting to that tipping point perhaps, is there the political will out there, since there, at least it hasn't existed in the last 40 years in large part, uh, is that political will something that is going to exist and that you foresee happening in the foreseeable future? Well, that's, that's the question. Uh, the political will does not exist right now. Uh, the focus is on uh, the middle class. That's the campaign. That, that's the class that they talked about in the campaign. Everyone talked about. Uh, the recession made everything worse. So un until we get past this recession, which may take one or two or three or four years, I don't think we can really start making progress with many, if not most, of the kinds of reforms I'm talking about, except those that cut across the middle class, working class, and the, and the poor. And that's, that's why I'm saying we, we, we need to be careful to have some strategies that, that do that, because we can, we can get a vote, voting majorities for, uh, for many of those, uh, especially economic uh, employment and uh, education reforms that, that I talked about. Everyone uh, wants to have more scholarships and grants for their kids, for example, rather, rather than loans. And uh, employment is, a, is an issue not just in the inner city anymore. Uh, so the uh, strategy for the immediate stimulus can begin. Uh, but that's where I quoted Rahm Emanuel, you know, let's use this crisis to try to uh, Let's solve it, but in the process of solving it, let's use the crisis as a basis for a long-term movement. Uh, the Obama people want to do that. I mean, that's why they have this this 10 million uh, member email list, and I think they can make progress. Both Obamas, uh, uh, Michelle Obama and Barack Obama, are both talking about a long-term movement, and they're go they're going to try. And I'm talking about trying as well. But it may be that we're in a situation where we can't get really serious about new will until the, the second Obama term. Hopefully uh, that, will, that will occur. But uh, your question is well taken, and we, the, 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 the sober, realistic answer is uh, we're not there yet. At least we have someone who gives us some hope, though. 